Hi. So I wanted to talk about uh, blocks in Objective-C and what are blocks. So if you've used other languages like C++ or C Sharp or Java, there's a concept called lambdas where you can essentially, you can pass in a function or functionality into uh, a method. And this is something that's very common for you've used uh, languages like uh, JavaScript, for example, where you can use higher order functions that essentially take another function as a parameter. So that is coming pretty handy uh, in the iOS world because the way that uh, previously uh, that, you know, if you had, let's say, an action you need to take, let's say uh, you needed to go out and make a request uh, to, uh, to, let's say, a web server, for example, and Sometimes that request may take, you know, more than a couple of milliseconds. It may take 40 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds. And you don't want to block the main thread while you're doing that. And so uh, previously, the way that uh, that was handled in the different uh, Mac OS and iOS SDKs is that you would essentially you would create a delegate. Uh, and then what you do is you would say, uh, you take this object and you would sign the delegate of that object to the class that you are currently working in. So you'd say, all right, go over here and do this. I need you to go out and get this web request. And then, you know, once you're done and you have results for me, call this method in my class. And that was the previous way. Uh, you, if you wanted to have that type of functionality, that's the way that you would typically do it. Uh, in some other languages, you might have to subclass another class. It's kind of like a, an abstract class that would do that. But uh, this has been, been made a lot easier uh, now that uh, you have uh, blocks inside of Objective-C. So let's take a look and see what blocks actually look like. Okay, so I have this uh, program here that I wrote here. And one of the things you notice here is I've declared an integer, uh, and we've set it to 68. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a block. And if you look at the format of this block, it's, it's actually it's not that simple. It's a little bit kind of crazy looking the first time you take a look at it. But what we're doing is we're defining a signature for, for this block. So here we have the return type. And then in the first set of parentheses, we put a little caret here at the beginning of the name of the method. In this case, we're just call, I'm going to call this anonymous method. And then in the second set of parentheses, you put any parameters that you might want to be able to handle in that. And one of the nice things about this example right here is it illustrates one of the functions or one of the things that's kind of neat about uh, being able to use blocks, let's say inside of a method, is that when you define and use that inside of a, uh, uh, an existing method, you can actually uh, get the variables or get the variable values uh, from the outside scope. So for instance, in this example right here, I'm making a call here to nslog and I'm passing in an integer, which is this integer right here. And if I actually come here and I run this, uh, we can see nothing's happening because I did not actually call it. So let's come over here and I'm gonna type in an anonymous method. And let's run that and see what happens. And we can see that it actually returned back the value that was set up above. But something else that's interesting about this is let's say I wanted to come over here, I want to change the value of that integer. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna say an integer, and I'm gonna set that to the answer to everything, 42. Run that again. And you can see here it still says 68. And the reason why is because if we want to make uh, changes to that variable inside of what's essentially the, the scope of the block, I have to essentially assign that keyword here. So you'd say underscore underscore block to an integer. And now I can change that value and it'll be reflected the next time I go to call this. So if I go to call this again, we can see now it's saying 42. So something else I also did here is if you look inside this uh, worker class, uh, I have defined a uh, essentially a, a block inside of here. So you can see we're following a similar format. I don't have a name in here yet, 
but I'm doing the same thing. I'm specifying a return type, and then I'm also specifying parameters here in the second set of uh, parentheses, and then I'm calling that the handler. And inside of the code here, um, what this is actually going to do is it's going to call that handler that's being passed in to create greeting, greeting for name. So let's come back here. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna add a line here. And for worker, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't create that greeting. And you can see it's highlighted the, uh, the signature here. And I'm just gonna hit uh, return on my keyboard here. And you can see that it auto-generated in here in Xcode uh, the full method signature. And then now I can come up here, I can actually write the code of what I want to happen here. So what we're actually doing is we're passing in behavior. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the NS string, string with format. And I am going to format this. I'm just going to say, percent at, percent at, and then in the value here, I want to say greeting and pass in the person name after that. And now this will actually go in here and it'll call this, but this still, I think this looks kind of noisy. And so one of the things that's nice about uh, Xcode, ha or sorry, uh, Objective-C having C roots is I wanted to, I can go over here, I can take this full signature here. Let's take this signature. I'm gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna come over here in this header and I'm gonna create a type def. And in this type def, I'm going to assign it a name. I'm going to call this my greeting handler. Copy that. And now what I can do is I can remove all of that and put in my greeting handler. I can do the same thing here in the implementation. Copy that out, and we have that here in the implementation, and this will just work. I gotta run that again. We can see that runs, and that's kind of a quick explanation of what blocks are and how they work in Objective-C. If you have any question, please leave a comment. Please subscribe to the video. Uh, if you like these, I'm gonna do a lot more of these. Uh, but this specific feature comes in very handy, especially when you have to do something that uses asynchronous types of callbacks. Uh, it's very powerful, uh, and we've just kind of scratched the surface. So thank you very much.